welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today, for the first time, uh, I'm actually, quite literally, unboxing um, a C3i magazine. Normally, these come in those baggies, so it, it would be an unbagging, uh, but I, I believe this is a design choice that Rogers implemented, where they come in this cardboard sleeve, and it is a box. You see it says C3i Magazine on it, RBM Studio. And it is a full-blown Z box. And I'm gonna mess it up probably, but you open it on the side here, it pulls out. Okay, so it opens up kind of like a book, although my magazine is upside down, because I, I repacked it. <laughs> okay, so this is issue 33, okay. And it's, it is in the bag, right? It's in a, in a bag just like you'd expect it. But it slides in here. So what that means is, during transit, it's fairly nice. But the best part about this, this is what I really like. I'm gonna open this up and we'll kind of fish it all out because there's a lot in here. It has with it, there is it. Ooh. I'm gonna have lost it, aren't I? There is a series of stickers. Ah, here it is. So is it this, there's this sticker page. And so we've got 33, which is this one. Okay. And it's, so we've, it's with the Waterloo campaign. So you've got a sticker here for the front and you've got a sticker for the spine. So you can literally have it in here Put your sticker on the side. Let's do it right now. Let's just do it. Who cares? Just so you can see. Nice little sticker. We're gonna put it this way on our shelf. So you can put it on here however you want. So now I've got this on my shelf as with all my boxes of other games so I can see what it is. Instead of having a bunch of magazines and a tub or you know, you know thrown into something else or just like as magazines taking up space I can put the little front cover sticker on here I can have that go in there just so it's nice and I can see exactly what it is I don't know it's it's nice I like it it's a nice storage solution and it makes it easier to keep these around on the shelf and not have them just like tucked away out of sight so you get a sheet for kind of back issues 32, 32, so you get an option because 32 came with two games. You can put both on there or whichever one's your favorite. 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 23, 20. So I, I think for it's basically everything that has like a full blown Z's game in it so far that you would keep is is included. But uh, I don't know, I think that's cool. I don't like it. So anyway, enough quaffle about that. Let's get the good stuff. <laughs> this is what we came for. So, magazine. Uh, C3i Series I Volume 2, and this is so issue number 33. So, with this, yeah, what do we got? 67 pages. Okay, so I'll take a quick look through here. We have alternative airborne landing stuff for Holland 44. Love this game. You've got an alternate chart to roll on where they might land, and then there's a set of counters which we'll get to as well. Big fan of that. Um, Stock and flow and war games, propaganda round number three. Interesting, I guess this is about supply and stuff in games and how that works. Very interesting. This is from Volco, so it's always something that I'm going to pay attention to. And that's basically leading into how he put all that into his new game, um, which was called Nevsky, which has a lot of supply and, and paying uh, your your kind of military just things like that. Fields of fire, infantry weapons and tactics. I wonder if this is gonna help us to actually be better at this game because I have my guys killed all the time. I'm, <laughs> I love this game, I'm not very good at it, but I had a chat with Ben Hull about um, volume 2 and the upcoming expansions for volume 1 for, for Fields of Fire at WBC last year. Fascinating to talk to him about it, but looks like we got a lot of military history in here, which is just going to be interesting for me to read, frankly. 
Uh, and the Y, I guess, different values are chosen. That's always nice. Uh, art posters. You can order box art posters um, for, from there. What do we got? Mark Herman's Cleo's Corner, number 10. He has a Mark Herman rights every year, South Pacific. This is a great game, by the way. South Pacific it came in. Um, C3I, good gracious, number 30. Good one, Plant Orange. I have it, haven't played it. That was in C3I 29. Daddy, you say you don't like war, so why do you play these games? Ah, oh, that speaks to me. That speaks to me a lot. And this is by um, VPJ Arponen. He does a lot of the solo bots for all the coin games, and uh, super interesting guy. So, we do have in here, and this is something that I thought was very interesting. So, Harold Buchanan designed a game called Campaigns of 1777 that came out in an s &T last year. Uh, but there is uh, some alternative stuff for that in this, which I think is very cool of them to have collaborated and for that to have been allowed to be made. So I am very, very excited for more. Um, so he's got some design notes and bits and pieces, but there's a whole new scenario for this campaign. Uh, Burgoyne joins Howe for a bite out of the Big Apple. So there's some alternative stuff. I think that's neat. And there's a solo method as well. That's pretty cool. We do have a Churchill variant as well in this issue, which Churchill, very popular game. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, Polemos variant for Pericles. I need to crack this out again. Haven't played this for a long time. and It was a, a very big one. And then we have our interview with Stuka Joe, um, Jose Ruiz. You'll know his voice from the internet. Uh, I could listen to him talk all day long. And I watched a lot of his videos when I was first getting into wargaming. It really helped me out. So I will be reading this one immediately. Uh, love Stuka Joe. He's just a, a character. December 1941 variant for Empire of the Sun. Operation Z, Invasion of Hawaii. So, um, more good stuff. Invasion of Hawaii. So then we have the Issy Campaign 1815. This is a campaign designed for Issy 1815, which came out in the last issue of C3I. Yeah, so a whole bunch of new stuff for that, which is nice. Uh, Battle of the Po River, an SPQR scenario. See here, what should I do? <laughs> this is funny. They made SPQR as like a deluxe version to bring all the stuff together, and they're still making more. <laughs> I, I just like that. It's a game that will never stop being made. Solo tactics for. Battles of the American Revolution series games. So that's pretty nice. And uh, interview with Ted Racer, who you know from Paths of Glory or the, the Dark System, Dark Valley, Dark Sands. Uh, he's also on Twitter. You can he's very chatty if you if you want to get into it with him. Um, there's a new card for Twilight Struggle. Uh, from the South Park episode that featured that game, so that was just a kind of fun shout out to them. And then, I, as you might expect, we have kind of a, an obit for uh, Richard Burke, who passed away last year, just like the world's greatest picture here of a very young, comparatively, Mark Herman and Richard Burke. <laughs> That's glorious. And then also for Chad Jensen, who passed away as well last year. So that's nice that we got some some kind of touching material. It will be interesting to read some there. Um, we do also have a little bit and pieces. So we have a manifest for everything that's on the counter sheet, and then some some weather stuff for uh, unconditional surrender. One of my favorite games, by the way. So that's basically everything you need to get in the magazine. Big magazine, a lot of good war game stuff, and there's a lot of war game magazines out there. See through is one of my favorite because it gives me like. Errata, mini expansions, or stuff for all the games I already have. And I, I think that's why I really have an affinity for this magazine as well. So, let's take a look at what we got. So this is, um, this is very typical of the C3i inserts that you get. The cards are the ones, kind of like for Plan Orange. I think, well, you, you have to punch them out. You'll be careful with them. And these, you'll, you'll basically, you'll want to sleeve them. So we got these cards for the Operation Z. The Invasion of Hawaii. 
Um, so we have those, and it looks like we've got these for the uh, markers for those, and that you have to. Actual counters will be in C-Throw number 34. So if you want to play these now, you can just stick these together and kind of use them. They're not actual counters, but in 34, so next year, you'll get the actual counters. You can do this now. Uh, this is the alternative president of the United States for Churchill. National characteristic, no, so inexperienced. First conference as U.S. leader, I only rolled 2d6 on a 2 through 5 minus 3 strength. Otherwise, he's 7. If global issue is in the UK track, game on political, a live up. Oh, okay. Interesting. And this is our card for, it's optional, for Twilight Struggle. Blame Canada. Oh my god. The Canucks kill Kenny. If the US controls Canada, remove all inf US influence, scoring two VPs for every two influence removed, up to four points. Then, smack nearest Canadian. Obviously, this is a joke as a shout out to that South Park episode. If you haven't watched it, it was <laughs> it was surreal watching South Park talk about our hobby as much as it did. Very, very surreal. Um, these are our, the Issy, the variants. That game was in C3I32. We have these temporary corrected back counters for 30, in 33. They'll actually be printed in 34 as well. And these are the labels. You're gonna stick these to a block for the uh, for the Churchill variant. So that's this part. Let's move this card. Again, just leave those, no big deal. So we have our Battle of the Po River for SPQR. And it, it, this is all the setup and all that stuff. It also gives you the simple Great Battles of History rules as well, um, because not everyone's gonna play the hardcore version. There's the simple version, which they've got that included, which is nice. This is, let's see, Battles of the Great America, uh, Battles of the American Revolution series games. I think this is the solo kind of module. You're all a die, and this is the kind of thing that they'll do based on what scenario that you're playing. So that's uh, that's interesting. We have that, so we we'll, we'll might we might use that to help learn the game. And then we have okay. Most of this is Mark Herman's Waterloo 1815. So we will check that out here in a second, real quick. Uh, looks like we have just a little card here. The Great War is a card game designed by Dana Lombardi, play tested and developed for the last two years. And it's just got beautiful artwork in it, so that'll be interesting to see. And that's just some advertising, so let's take a quick look at the actual counter sheet. So this is Grey Core. So we have, oops, let's go right around. So all of our stuff for Waterloo is right here. It is not a lot, but it is there. Uh, I believe that's all it is. I believe it's just this. It's not a huge, massive, dense game. That's not what this game was designed for. This is based on the same system um, that Gettysburg was that he did last year. It's the same system, I believe, modified and on a much bigger scale, obviously. But it is low counter density and it plays quickly. Uh, we have some counters for Wilderness War here as well. It mean, looks like we got Marines for Clash of Giants, a Civil War game. We got some counters. Uh, this is for Campaigns of 1777. We got a uh, Warner, which is part of that alternate campaign that we've got there. Um, so are these replacement counters for last hundred yards? I think those might be. Uh, these are for the uh, the alternate uh, Allied airborne landings for Holland 44. Uh, we got markers for Hitler's Reich, I guess. Maybe that's these two. Let's Creek bonus and production center bonus. That's probably those two. These are gonna be for, these are drop hexes for the different airborne divisions. So you got um, first para, is this 101st and then 82nd, I think. So then we have up here, I think this is Battle of Issy. So that alternate campaign, that's these markers. We have our Fields of Fire Volume 2 replacement markers, which is the one thing. <laughs> ah, Fields of Fire Volume 2 was missing one counter, 
and it was that naval observer marker. It was not in my game, and I was hoping that that would be in this, and it's not, which is a little bit frustrating, but it is what it is. So we're going to get some replacement markers for the machine guns and a bazooka. Uh, when eagles fight, we have some markers, plant orange replacement marker, some stuff for Pericles, and this is our, um, well, is it? This is Hoplite counters and Sardis counters. I don't know if those are replacement ones. These are our weather counters for Unconditional Surrender, Paths of Glory Deluxe replacement counter. These look like they're from Gallipoli, but I could be mistaken about that. All right, that's that's what those look like, but I could be mistaken about those. Uh, unsure about those. Pause of Glory Deluxe was those. Oh, it, yeah. So these are these are Gallipoli here. I don't know. What those are they just look similar. So these are for Gallipoli. All of these are Gallipoli is a huge game. There's a trillion counters for that game, but there's a lot of stuff here. It just you get bits and pieces for all your games. Which is nice. I enjoy that. So, let's take a look at the actual game that you get in here. Waterloo. This is what we all came for. So, play track. So, remaining moves and attacks. And you've got your turn record track. Sequence of play. Here's what they can all do. Okay, you got your French set up here. And we'll just make sure that that's the case, right? And then... There's not a lot. Huh. That's fascinating. It's very small counter density, which I appreciate in a game. And the reverse side, you just have this is the setup, right? It's this huge map, and you got like this few, few counters here. So, you got a guy down here. So, this is the Waterloo campaign. Attack summary. Just got on this. This is how you do an attack. And you've got your terrain effects chart on the back. We do have a rules book. This is entirely separate. It's not something you have to pull out of the magazine and ruin the magazine staples. This is 23 pages. Those are designer notes. We don't care about that. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I do... So these are... You've got these paintings. And I hope that these correspond to the actual setups of what happened during this. That's incredibly cool. We have the scenario, this is the full campaign. Yeah, these are pretty intense. This is like a very long example of play, but I don't know how much of an example play it is. Yeah, I guess it is. So examples of play, scenario, this is the Waterloo set scenario. So, rules, seven pages. <laughs> okay, great, <laughs> that's what I was looking for. Seven pages. Six pages, because the first page is the front cover, and this is basically set up. So really, not a lot of rules here. It is just text, mostly, but I'm hoping that all of these different setups and examples are going to help us walk through it all. I had Gettysburg taught to me by Mark Herman, so it was very easy to pick up, but this should be fairly simple to actually pick up and learn. And then, let's take a look at the last thing, which is this map. All right. It is a big map, 22, 22 by 34, and it is a, it looks a little bit busy from all the different contours, uh, but it, it's the actual important stuff, these really dark roads, the very bold villages and towns, the bold river, the Meuse, is very, very clear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of bring this up and show you the detail in these. It was a pretty, it's a pretty nice looking map, and the colors do look good. We'll look at Namur. That's just, it's cool looking. I enjoy this. This would be nice to play on. The stuff that's important is very bold. With my few counters moving around, it shouldn't be too bad to play on, which is nice. So, that is the map for Waterloo. This is all available in one nice package C3i33. Again, you get the cool box, and I am a big fan of these. And I'm pretty sure you'll be able to get a flat pack just to like five or six boxes. I'm sure you'll be able to buy those um, so that you can fill the rest of these out as well. So C3i33 available now. Go check it out. It has 
a whole bunch of stuff for a lot of popular games that you already own so it's always worth the investment plus you're getting good articles interviews um, from other board game luminaries as well. So appreciate you guys tuning in. This is C3i33 and I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.